Hi, it's Jim and Craig, and we've got a partner spotlight. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, Jared Jablonski, Jim and Craig, nice to see you guys. Hi, Jared, thank you for joining us. So whereabouts are you located? So I am currently in Dubai, UAE, so in the Middle East, uh, but my main uh, housing and business activity is in North Florida. So I'm originally from South Florida, I moved up to North Florida and been there uh, ever since uh, like 87, so a long time now. Jared, could you, for those that don't know, could you tell us a little bit about GUE, Global Underwater Explorers? Absolutely, be a pleasure. So um, I got, I'm, as I mentioned, I moved up from South Florida uh, when I went to college. And so I was already an avid diver and I moved up to North Florida, started diving, got really into technical diving and cave exploration and started to teach it as well. And I started to get um, a bit frustrated because a lot of the students that I was dealing with didn't really have the requisite foundation to proceed in an effective way. So they were being frustrated, having trouble getting into cave diving, uh, having trouble with what I ultimately identified were many times fundamental skills. Uh, so I saw some weaknesses on the fundamental platform and then ultimately also saw some weaknesses in the cave and technical training that I was doing uh, in a variety of areas. So I wanted to, to really refine that training and change it a bit so that people had a better ability to scale their diving any way they wanted, whether it was just, you know, more aggressive uh, current uh, reef diving or technical or cave diving. Uh, and then I was also doing a lot of project-based work, exploration and conservation. And it really seemed to me a bit sad because I'd grown up on the Cuyana Cousteau model and it seemed to me that we'd sort of lost that plot. And I thought that was really unfortunate because it really got me into diving. And so I really wanted to provide a platform where there was a much better integration between the learning how to dive in a scalable way, so you could do it throughout the spectrum of your interest, and then also to get into more active and engaging projects. So ultimately that, resent, that uh, resulted in the foundation of Global Underwater Explorers officially in 1998, though we started work even before then. What motivated Global Underwater Explorers to partner with Scuba Digital? I was pretty intrigued by the concept from the beginning. Uh, I looked at some of the activities that were going on and some of the people that were interested. Obviously, we're, our worlds have all changed considerably. You know, so a year ago, I think you know, none of us would really probably even be thinking about this, but we've had to do a lot of online work. We're doing a ton of online meetings at the moment with all of our various groups, our members, our board members, our, our community. We just ran a community day online. And so the online platform, uh, even when COVID goes away, I think is going to continue to grow. So I was really excited to see someone taking the lead and trying to develop something engaging and dynamic in the digital scuba world. And I think I think we all have to. COVID makes it a necessity, but in general, it's still interesting for people because it opens up time zones and travel and really allows people to partake in something that they wouldn't be able to partake in otherwise, even if travel were easy. So I like the way it's getting organized and we were excited to get involved. So what is it that GUE are exhibiting at the this year's show? Well, we're really excited at this year's show to be exhibiting a range of different topics. So it really, I think, is reflective of the kind of things that we're doing at GUE. So we're a community, a global community, really, of explorers and educators. And so as a result, those groups organize many different projects and a heavy emphasis for us is also conservation. So we're training divers, we're exploring areas and we're conserving different environments. So we've got a spectrum of individuals that are gonna be talking about all that. Uh, we've got individuals talking about a project we founded named Project Baseline. So it's director Todd Kincaid is gonna come on and talk about that. Now 10 year old conservation project we originally founded. Uh, we've got uh, Marcus Rose will be coming on and talking about a lot of community building that's good for our organization, because we do a ton of this globally, but also any agency or any group that's looking to develop their community and get people excited about diving. Uh, we have a spectrum of explorers coming on, people like Mario Arena, who's doing a ton of amazing archaeology and exploration and wreck hunting all through Italy and globally, and Richard Lundgren, who's doing a tremendous uh, amount of work on the Mars shipwreck and hundreds of shipwrecks around the world. We've got people doing work on decompression diving and side mount and rebreather and CCR. Then also on the recreational side, uh, we want to really bring in a lot of those individuals as well. So we have people talking about recreational training and different configurations, being equipment configurations uh, for, for diving at the recreational level. Uh, we have people coming on about you know, the value of fundamental skills. So I mentioned at the top of this discussion about how we found that these foundational or beginning or fundamental skills were really critical to allowing people to scale their diving and to be comfortable and safe. 
So we have some of that going on. Then we have some technical stuff with photogrammetry. So how to capture and, and dynamically document different types of environments, rec exploration through history, uh, and a number of different projects, really probably two more than you want to cover now, but uh, just a whole lot of uh, spectrum of our community and a lot of the activities they're pursuing. It sounds to me like GUE is certainly not just for technical divers. Absolutely. So we we started on the more technical side. So we kind of have reversed the pyramid. You know, most people put most of their energy into the beginning diving, and then they slowly evolved, you know, towards technical diving. And we started with a more technical emphasis because as the organization was built, I mentioned we were mostly myself and the other individuals that got excited about supporting me in the development of the organization. We were avid explorers. And so we built an organization modeled somewhat after Cousteau, but quickly we realized uh, that, you know, really we needed to get people as early as we could so we could build that foundation more robustly. I mentioned that, you know, one of the early things I saw as a cave trainer for other agencies as I began thinking about refining training was the fundamental component. That was one, that's probably was our most recreational class. And it started from the beginning because we were really teaching people how to prepare for technical classes. But that quickly showed us, of course, that it would be better if we could teach people at the beginning instead of letting them get one, two, three, five, 10, 20, 30 years of experience and bad habits, you know, hand fitting and, you know, this kind of stuff, we could catch them earlier. So we've put progressively more energy building the pyramid backwards. And now more and more of our training is actually at the entry level as well. So, Jared, unlike Paddy and other diving organizations, you're a nonprofit organization. Why is that? A couple of reasons that I founded GUE as a nonprofit. So um, one of the first is we really had that sort of Cousteau-like exploration conservation model. And our goal was really to build communities of skilled, capable divers that could do everything from recreational projects, which might be taking pictures in shallow water, all the way through robust, deep exploration, which could be you know archaeology or recoveries of, of ancient artifacts for museums, that sort of stuff. Uh, and so in the end, that was our mental orientation. And then on the training side, we really wanted to remove incentive uh, to move divers and instructors and instructor trainers quickly through the process. So there aren't any shareholders, nobody benefits from, you know, training, making more instructor trainers or instructors. The only thing that happens is a positive thing, but the only thing that happens is we have more revenue to invest in our nonprofit missions. Uh, and so we wanted to sort of diffuse that so myself and nobody else, including future generations of GUE, because I'd like to dream that it goes on for decades after me, hopefully many decades from now, we will be having that you know, thought. Uh, and so we really wanted to diffuse the profit incentive and really focus on the quality of the training and, and the kinds of projects that we could do for the betterment of the industry and the environment. Jared, how has COVID-19 affected GUE as an organization and, and also your members too? Wow, you know, how, how hasn't COVID affected any of us? It's such a crazy world now. I mean, you know, we, it, it's been tough, I'll be honest, in many different ways, uh, not the least of which I would usually spend, you know, 50 to 80% of my given year traveling. And so that, you know, kind of shut down pretty quickly. And many of our principals did the same. Many of our projects were the same as well. And then, of course, that's all leaving aside training and uh, you know, all the activities that had been scheduled that had to be canceled, either the exploration, conservation or educational components. So it had a pretty big immediate effect that we couldn't really get together and see people. Uh, on the other side, you, you know, I think there's always a silver lining. It helped to shore up some components of the organization. We found some additional time to work on projects that had been building up for a long time because we were kind of stuck in front of our computers for longer than we wanted. And we began to reach out in a little bit better way and build a little bit better infrastructure to support the connection of all of our communities on a global based, global and regular basis. So we began organizing uh, regular online meetings. We began, or began organizing even community based meetings. And that's something that we in, in, intend to hold on to. So I think that really this has helped to show us that it's gotten everybody used to this kind of digital platform, which a lot of us said, oh, I can just meet you in person. But now that everybody's gotten used to it, the tools continue to get refined. 
And now I think we've, we've developed a, a real comfort with it. And so I see this some going on into the future, even when we can meet in person more easily. You guys um, support a variety of conservation organizations. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So conservation is, is one of our, our real lifebloods of the organization. We really try to leverage all of our community members towards that and, and, and encourage them to join any conservation project of interest. We founded our own project baseline, as I mentioned at the top. So we founded that about 10 years ago, and that's documenting baseline conditions and environments around the world. So that lets all of our communities document the environment on an ongoing basis so we can measure the decline or hopefully the improvement of different types of initiatives. Uh, and that can be done in many different ways, depending on the sophistication of the community. So some people are using detailed 3D photogrammetry, water chemistry analysis, uh, stereoscope, work, uh, you know, some of those uh, are doing in situ millimeter accurate archaeological representations. And then other people, the, you know, the most basic level is just a simple picture of a, of a known environment on a repeated basis th throughout the year. So that's one project that we put a lot of energy into uh, because it's, of course, one of the ones we got founded. But then we happily support everything uh, from fish counts, which uh, mainly has been through reef check, but we have done volunteer work for many different groups. Ghost fishing is another common group where we help remove litter and, and in this case, you know, fish nets uh, from the from the environment, from abandoned wrecks, the and try to clean those up. We do quite a bit of work for a variety of different museums uh, and governments that have requested work in the in the past. So collecting a variety of water samples or biological analysis. So it really just depends on the project of the day. And what has been most encouraging to me is that we've really push our communities to reach out to their local areas and to try to find out what's locally relevant and then drive all their membership to try to help support that initiative. And that was one of the big things that we really wanted to create with GUE is a kind of permanent positive presence associated with the GUE communities that were resident in a particular area. You know, I love expeditions probably as much or more than anyone, but the weakness of that is, you know, you can foreground a cause or an issue short term, you know, go there, visit, flash gone, or you can build a community that really helps create a positive presence and, and affect the community in a longstanding way. And I believe the local people know how best to take care of the local environment. They know what's the salient important kinds of issues. That's why we created Project Baseline the way we did, so we could give them tools. And that's how we support all of our local communities to do the same thing in a variety of different ways. So other than the monthly digital magazine in depth with our friend Michael Menduno, how do people find out what GUE are up to? That's a great question. We have a number of different channels by which people can locate information about GUE. And, and I do want to also give a plug to our friend Michael Menduno. He's doing a great job over there. Uh, we're really happy with his work. I've known Michael many years and I was really excited for the opportunity to work with him. And in-depth is one of the contributions that GUE really wanted to just make to the scuba diving community at large. So it's a free blog that we public or that we support publication of. So uh, that we're the primary sponsor of getting that rolling. And now we've had some great sponsors that have recently joined in so that we can share some of the costs associated with running it. I'm happy about that, both from a content perspective and, and a distribution perspective. Uh, in addition to the great work at uh, in-depth, we also have GUE TV, which is a platform where we have a bunch of uh, free and also subscriber based content, but there's a bunch of stuff there that's free so people can check that out. There's also a limited time uh, subscription that you can do for free so you can see what's behind the paywall to get an idea. And we're updating that on a regular basis with documentaries and film and training videos, all those sorts of activities. We also run a, a pretty good and, and quickly growing YouTube channel. Uh, so people can check us out on YouTube. We've got we're we're really adding a whole lot of bunch a whole lot of new content to that as well. Uh, we're pulling some stuff from GBTV and repackaging a few things uh, from that side. And then we also have a range of membership uh, levels. So we have memberships all the way down from around twenty dollars and and scale all the way up depending on what you're interested in. But for the entry level membership, people can get quite a lot of access to. Uh, inside updates, training platforms, new training procedures. We have a quarterly magazine that we also publish for our members so that they can read on a regular basis about that. It also includes, uh, even the entry level includes an online platform that we run that allows people to ask questions in real time uh, as well. 
Then we also publish a number of newsletters that can be signed up for free. So you can go to the website. We have several different options, but you can get the GBHQ newsletter or TV newsletter, or a few of those different newsletters that we promote from the website. So a lot of different ways to find out what we've got going on. Uh, you can also join the Scuba Digital Show and find out in great detail what we have going on uh, coming up in the near term. Yeah, I mean, that all sounds absolutely fantastic. And there's obviously so much going on with Global Underwater Explorers. The best thing for people to do is pop along and come and see you. Yes, indeed. The website's a good starting point. So uh, GUE.com is a great, uh, or globalunderwaterexplorers.org, but that's a lot hard, it's a lot longer to type. Uh, so you can uh, pop by to GUE.com and check out all the different things that we've got available. And there it is, GUE.com. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Jared. Have a great show and we look forward to seeing you again shortly. Thanks very much. Pleasure speaking to both of you and take care of yourselves. <laughs>